Today's punch is another from that venerated pinnacle of Scottish intellectualism, Blackwood's Magazine. This recipe comes to us courtesy of Morgan O'Doherty, pen name of William McGinn and author of the wildly popular Maxims of O'Doherty, a series of crotchety observations on drinks and other matters of deep importance that appeared in Blackwood's in 1824. And this punch is particularly interesting to me because it uses a rack. I talk about a rack briefly in this video. The Reader's Digest version is, it's Javanese cane spirit that was an essential ingredient in punches in the 17th and 18th centuries. This is an absolute banger of a punch, and if you can get the necessary ingredients, you must try it. This is the recipe. In making rack punch, you ought to put two glasses of rum to three of a rack. A good deal of sugar is required, but sweetening, after all, must be left to taste. Lemons and limes are also a matter of palate, but two lemons are enough for the above quantity. Put then an equal quantity of water, that is, not five, but six glasses to allow for the lemon juice, and you have a very pretty three tumblers of punch. Mix in a jug. Okay, so this recipe is actually pretty straightforward. It even tells us what to mix it in. It doesn't say how much sugar or citrus to use. I'll come back to those in a bit. It also says lemons and limes are a matter of taste. I guess that's true. I've made this with both, and I'll be using limes. It does say two glasses of rum and three of a rack, so the only thing we need to know is, how much is a glass? Well, we know that a glass at that time meant a wine glass, which was two ounces. So ten ounces of booze in an equal quantity of water, and since the recipe says to use not five but six glasses to account for the juice, we know to use two ounces of lime. An equal quantity of sugar for balance, and that's it. For the Iraq, I'll be using Batavia Iraq Van Oosten, which to my knowledge is the only Iraq of its kind available in the States, and for the rum I'll be using Smith & Cross. The recipe doesn't specify a particular type of rum, but Mr. Wondrich recommends something full-bodied or a mix of a Jamaican with something mellower from Barbados or Guiana. Now I love playing with rum, so initially I was committed to finding the absolute perfect combination to make this the best tasting and most effective alcohol delivery system in history. But after many experiments, we concluded that this is the best recipe to start off with. I mean, I could give you an expertly curated combination of rums, but I'd just be showing off and that's not what I'm about. Well, maybe sometimes. I also like this recipe because it's the only one I've ever seen that prescribes a serving size, three tumblers. Are you a lightweight or don't feel like drinking too much? Well, too bad. Okay, enough talk. Here's how I make this. In a medium-sized pitcher, combine two ounces of demerara sugar, two ounces of boiling water, and stir until dissolved. Add two ounces of lime juice, four ounces of Smith & Cross, six ounces of Iraq, and ten ounces of cold water. Stir with ice and pour into three glasses and there's some left over. Oh, also, it's not in the recipe, but I did great nutmeg over this. Oh man, that's good. Well, first off, this is a bit boozier than usual. There's complexity, depth of flavor, the Iraq and the rum talk to each other. This is nuts. Man, it's so good. If you're wondering if you can use a different rum, the short answer is, it depends. Experienced rum nerds will know what to plug in if they want something more esoteric. If that's you, you know who you are, proceed. And if you're having a hard time sourcing Smith & Cross, Appleton Signature will get you in the ballpark, but I would recommend against using Myers or Karuba. I enjoy them both, but I don't think they would work here. Sorry guys. And a rack, unfortunately, cannot be substituted by anything. It's one of a kind, just like me. I also want to say this punch is special to me because it's the first one I made out of the book. I had never tasted anything like a rack or Smith & Cross before, and this was kind of my introduction into a new world. But yeah, on to my victims. Carrie. Is that nutmeg? Yes. That's good. That's dangerous. It's good. I can definitely taste the rum. I could drink this like fruit punch. I mean, I know it's Smith and Cross because I'm sitting next to it, but I think I would have known it's Smith and Cross anyway. Well, you know I love this. Everyone should love this. So what flavor does this give? The way I heard one person describe it was it adds kind of a flat twang to anything you put it in. Well, it tastes good, it smells terrible. I can taste a little twang. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little, well, it smells a little like, like agricole. There's something else in there, it's like cement. What am I drinking? It's a rack punch. It's rum, a rack, lime juice, a little bit of sugar. The recipe is from 1824. It's like a... Fancy daiquiri or a different? Where did they come from? Jamaica? They came from Scotland, actually. Scotland? Oh, really? That'll do. And that is a single serving, so I hope you're enjoying it. I'll enjoy it, yes. That is delicious. And this is one serving? Correct. Awesome. I've had nothing to eat today, almost. Cheers to me. <laughs> this one's going quickly. Yeah, I'm cleansing, can't you tell? And now I'm having my cocktail. That was terrible. Bartender. 
If you'd like to hit like, oh, what is it again? If you like this video, like and subscribe. Hit subscribe. Do you hit subscribe? What do you, how do you subscribe? But you should totally subscribe because I subscribe and it's rad and I love it. You hit a button. Hit the button. If you liked it, hit the button. You liked it. Hit it. Hit, hit the button. Subscribe. You're awesome. I'm a little buzzed. Have a great day.